Just want to share a minute here about something that I read earlier today. It's called The Teaching of the Twelve Apostles, commonly called the Didache. Um, I found this to be very interesting. I heard, I heard about this many times before, but I just haven't really gotten into it and haven't really um, studied it. And uh, it, it is uh, it's a, it's a text, it's a manuscript that uh, is, is from the, uh, the, uh, uh, the time and uh, a, a period where just around the book of Acts or within the first couple hundred years of the book of Acts. It depends on who you're talking to. depends on which scholar you talk to. Some scholars believe it was written, you know, right along with all the other New Testament writings that we have in the New Testament. Others believe it was written just shortly thereafter. But um, regardless of the fact, um, uh, it is, it's very interesting. Um, it's, uh, it's a writing that is attributed to the Twelve Apostles. Um, I consider this to be very interesting because uh, mo most of uh, the New Testament that, that uh, we have in the Bible today is uh, written by Paul, which is not really even one of the Twelve. He is, he is not one of the twelve, but this is one of the twelve apostles that Jesus handpicked um, uh, when he was in the flesh on this earth. Um, and uh, there's, there's nothing in here that, uh, that's really, I would say, that would go against any scripture at all. Um, I'm sure there might be people that might disagree with me, but I, I don't see anything in here uh, that, uh, that goes against anything. It's more or less a, a, a kind of a manual of how to live, um, a manual to the, uh, actually it says here, to the heathen by the Twelve Apostles, but it's more like a, a manual for the church and for the believers and how to live. It's got a lot of things about, uh, you know, the moral standards. Uh, one thing here I find very noteworthy, it, it says very clearly, um, explicitly, do not murder a child by abortion. Uh, and this is proven to be uh, at least uh, from, uh, you know, the second century, if not right around the time of just, just after the ascension of Christ that this was written. Um, very interesting. Uh, talks about baptism. This is something that I, I, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type of person that I really believe in immersion baptism. That that's, the word, that's what the word of baptism means is immersion. But uh, talks about here about uh, you should be baptized um, uh, uh, with running water, and if you don't have enough water, just you know, put a little bit of water in your forehead and and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Which I can see that that could be, probably be acceptable if you know back in those days, you know, a, a cup of water might have uh, been very scarce to find, let alone a whole big bath for thousands of people to actually have a bath in. Um, so I can understand uh, that that would probably be something that uh, uh, that they would be. Uh, compromising or at least something that they uh, that they would believe that the Lord would would overlook seeing that they have no other way of baptizing um, one thing as well that I find very interesting and this is for sure you know that like I said a lot of people think uh, believe that it's written by the Apostles themselves uh, around 40 AD um, and some say it's as late as the second century, but I find it very interesting because it's, uh, you know, it talks about the coming of the Lord uh, later on in in the uh, in the book, um, and it, and it talks about how uh, uh, basically that everything that we're looking for today is what they were looking for back then, uh, you know that. Uh, that the Lord would come and and, uh, and and gather His own, and you know there would be the, the the dead in Christ shall rise first, and all that kind of thing. I find it to be very interesting because there are some what they call preterists out there that believe that everything is already uh, fulfilled. Uh, obviously, the uh, the twelve apostles didn't believe that at the time of this writing, uh, whether it be 40 A.D. or 200, uh, you know. <laughs> a uh, hundred and something not AD where it depends on what scholars you're talking about well if it is written earlier then hey uh, this has got a really good um, moral code in it that I think every Christian should read and every Christian should practice I believe along with some other church uh, founding church fathers um, and there are founding you know, what they call church fathers um, 
uh, you know, some of the uh, preceder or su successors of the apostles that actually counted this as scripture, holy scripture that would be counted as the same kind of scripture as what, what, what we have in the, in the New Testament. And I certainly would say that we that that would be safe to say that this is that this uh, this particular writing is uh, in fact uh, authoritative. Um, there's nothing in here that goes against anything that the Lord taught uh, or any other part of the scriptures uh, the, uh, inspired of God. Anyway, um, very interesting. I, I encourage everybody to get a, uh, get a hold of this and to read it. It's not very long, actually. Uh, I just got it. I, I just uh, printed it out here on the, what was it, like four and a half pages. <laughs> it's not that long. Um yeah, so read it and uh, be blessed, and uh, and uh, let's uh, let's do what it says. It's got a lot of great stuff in here, um, and uh, I think it's something that everybody sh would do well to heed. I think it's something that the Lord Himself would want us to to read and to heed. Thanks for watching.